Louis C. Gross II, Educational Consultant for MSI, which stands for Manhood Shelter Incorporated. You know, as I was driving in today, I was thinking about our children and, you know, you know uh, about maybe 10,000 of them are homeless. And why is that? We have to look at what? Mothers and fathers who may be in the house and may not be in the house. But nine times out of ten, they're not in the house. We did a, a thing called a family sculpture where we, we identified everybody in that home who was under tyranny because of addiction. Addiction. The expense, you know, the pursuit of pleasure at the expense of your freedom. Everybody knows, man, if you addicted, nothing counts more than getting high. And as a result, your children are the last thing you even think about. I was, I was thinking about the five areas of human development. One, cognitive, how we process information, how we think, reorganization of information to come out with an outcome. Uh, two, physical, in order to, you had to crawl out of the wall. Three, emotional. How we react to situations, whether it be positive or negative. Four, social. How we interact with each other. And five, and this is where you see the problems that we're having right now in terms of behavior. Five, moral development. Moral development. If you have no one in the home to teach you, you know, home training. Oh, it goes to Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he gets old, he will not depart from it. Home training. And when we see it every day with our children, you know, uh, it's a shame. We no longer open doors for ladies. We no, we, no, we, no, we no longer take our hats off when we come into a, a, a building. I mean, these are, these are, this, this is rudimentary. This is elementary. This is basics that we're not even dealing with. You know, as, a, as a, a culture and basically as a society. Because our children represent what society is all about. And look at society. Look at it right now. You know... I want to tell you about, in raising a child, I, 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 I equate it with an acorn. <laughs> yeah, an acorn. An acorn. Put it right here, nothing happens. Put that acorn in the soil. It gets roots, a foundation. It grows from that into a what? An oak tree. Same thing applies to our children. You have to raise them and nurture them. There's a thing called object permanency, where the behavior through the child, through the child's eyes, through, through the parents, deals with consistency. If that parent deals with the arousal relaxation cycle, let me explain that to you. You ever been hungry and your stomach starts growling? That's the arousal part of it. You, then you eat, and then what happens? Relaxation. You want to go to sleep. At least in Mexico, they're honest. You know, when they get to reading, they take a siesta. Here in North America, we want to play a game like, okay, well, I had I had lunch, and so I'm going back to work, only to be falling asleep every chance you can get. See, we, 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 we're hypocrites in a lot of ways, and the children see it and internalize it. So, well, Mr. Gross, what should you do? First of all, if you're a parent, and when I talk about the arousal re relaxation cycle, that means... We're dealing with consistency. If that baby cries, the baby cries because it impacts its environment. When it wants to be healed, fed, it cries. And then it ceases to cry when you address those issues. That's what's happening with our children. Those issues are not, not, not really addressed. That child will cry and cry and cry and nobody comes, which makes a difference in terms of whether that child will be optimistic about life or pessimistic about life. And look at our children right now. Look at him. Very pessimistic.
that, about life, about people in general. Because you have to look at it. They've dealt with a lot of contradictions. For instance, the father says he's out of the home, so he sees his child in the street. So he says, hey, I'll be by there this Friday. Now that child, that home, on a Friday, waiting for what? That father to come through. And what happens? The man does not show up. What does that do to that child? Now, we have what you call a defense mechanism. <coughs> that child now resents authority because this is the byproduct of, you know, of what's happening with, with his relationship. It goes his, to the behavior. Now that child doesn't trust authority, doesn't want to hear what you got to say, and now he's looking for love in all the wrong places. The same thing applies not only to the female, but the male too, the male and the female. Because if that female is not getting, you know, nurturing and love in the home, she seeks it elsewhere. And you know what happens with that. Risky behavior, things that happen, you know, that out of the pocket. So what I'm getting at is that these children, and oh yeah, the, uh, uh, about 10,000 of these children are homeless, trying to go to school. Call her, go, question the comment, go ahead, you're on the air. Yeah, how you doing, my friend? Hey, Ray, what's going on? I, okay, you know, you used to say they were basic. Kids have no basics anymore. Right. You know what they're look. You know what they're looking for? It's not a job. You know what they're looking for? What? They're Tell me, Ray. They're looking for respect. Respect. Okay. Oh no, they don't even know what respect is. True. Yeah, you know that's true. You know when we were growing up. We knew what respect was. Right, right. We knew what pride was. Right. They don't have any pride. You know, they, all, they, all they know, like, oh, that goes, uh, the so and so, he's good. He's a nice guy, the neighbor. But they knew the bad ones, too. Oh, well, don't, don't, don't mess with him. You know, and that's all it is now. It's all bad ones. You know, but let me say this. About, you always say about, oh, you know, pulling yourself up by your bootstrap. Oh, yeah, right, right. End up, you know. We don't have any boots. Hang, hang on to the rope, you know. Yeah. But you know what, you know, you see, that son and that daughter and the, and the mom, mm -hmm. they want to see their dad coming home from work. But in this city, you're not going to see it. True. You know why? Because, I'm going to tell you what. Go ahead, Ray. Three projects, three big million dollar projects. Are going up in the city right now. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. One and not one black owned, not one black owned, or one Hispanic owned uh, uh, construction company is in them. Yeah. How are we gonna tell, go home? You know, I I got no straps to pull up my boots. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. I don't mean to laugh, but that's true. But that's all I want to say. And, and oh man, you know, I respect you so much. And uh, that's why I call you every week. I appreciate it, Ray. I, I appreciate it. I need you. I need you. You know I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, buddy. Thanks, Ray. Bye -bye. Thanks. You know, Ray hit on some good points. There's no respect. Because if there's no respect in the home, how can there be any respect out of the street? Number one, we all know, if you do not respect yourself, how are you going to respect somebody else? <laughs> and this is where we call between a rock and a hard place. Because, as I, would mention, as I mentioned before, with a lot of our students who are homeless, they're not thinking about algebra, A. They're not thinking about biology, B. They're not thinking about chemistry, C. They're not thinking about discipline, D. They're not thinking about economics, E. But they are thinking about F for food, and we go back to H for home, for, for, for no, shelter at home. <coughs> That's why our kids are so, so bitter. Because... You see, okay, I see a peer that comes from a home with a mother and father. I see this peer as having everything that I really want, but I don't have. So, what do I do? There's a thing called displacement. Well, if my family's not giving it to me, and I see these other people, because I'm making the comparisons, I see these other peers of mine living their life, going on trips, Christmas, getting toys. So now, 
in this displacement situation, I'm looking for nurture, I'm looking for love in all the wrong places. So what do I do? I hook up with Dirty Harry, and I'll kill you Lucy. These become my mother and my father. These become my brothers and my sisters. And also, on my way to jail, or to the morgue, that's who I'm following. <coughs> this drug is very insidious. Because, see, this is by design. Crack cocaine as opposed to cocaine. You get more for what? Uh, cocaine and crack. But see, this thing came out of a free, freeway Bobby and them out of Cincinnati. And then it, it elevated coming this way. And this, look at it, the Contras and all that, they brought it in, and then they started mixing it. And out of the whole deal, one person went to jail. That was the, the brother, Bobby, I think. He was on a, a, a TV show some, about a couple of years ago. Russell Brand brought him on for him to tell his story about how, you know, they systematically did this. But that all goes to, uh, to about power control. When, oh, look here. Power and control. Once a minority reaches a majority, they hate a minority. See, we have a tendency to think about it's about race. No, it's about power and control. For instance, we're a minority, right? Pretty soon we can it to be a majority. We, we were calling shots and making money. Now all of a sudden, I see the same situation with another minority trying to rise, rise through the ranks. And I can visualize myself being in that position and know what happened when I got up here. What am I going to do? I'm going to keep them down. It's about power and control. Call me on there. Go ahead. Question or comment. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes. Brother, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a senior, okay? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm from way back. <coughs> so I've, been, I've been watching our struggle from way back. Mm -hmm. Okay, now listen, brother. Let me try to put everything in focus. First of all, I look at all the different groups and organizations mm -hmm. that are involved in the struggle. Yes. Okay? I listen to them. They are uh, they they make logic, talk, in, including moral, moral and even some religious. So it is ethical. It is ethical. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. But sir, we are dealing with the people that uses this N word again against us that we're missing because they put the N in ethical and make it ethnical. And that's their response is coming from an ethnic thinking. Uh huh. That's why our ethic thinking doesn't get through. Because their their charge is this. How can you tell us we are wrong when our method has put us in power? Now, see? So and do you expect us to give up the method that put us in power, you think we just give them up? It is historically. Oh, yeah, right. Right. It is historically. They're not going to give it up. It doesn't make sound since even expected. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. What the gentleman is basically saying is if I have the power, do you think I'm going to relinquish it? Why would I? It doesn't make sense. So what we do, we utilize a diversionary tactic called race. And within that situation, we can divide and conquer and keep what, what we feel as though is ours. Let me just say this. Do you actually believe that the powers would be what we relinquish their power because of a nuclear bomb, but yeah, you need to know this. They will blow this whole world up before they give it up. Stop being foolish to think that oh, communism is opposed to capitalism. It's about look here. It's about money. <coughs> Karl Marx, the Communist Manifesto. No, Karl Marx or Frederick Engels wrote the Communist Manifesto. In it, they talk about the proletariat. That's you and me, supposedly, and how the powers that be. We're always the ruling class, 
That's why they kill the czar. You know, uh, Lenin in the game. Because Marie Antoinette the same way. Once you get into power, then you become so so into it till you just just you know discard everything else and everybody's a peon. You get a, you get a guillotine. <laughs> Ask Marie and, and Louis the Fourteenth. Yes, call you on there. Go ahead. Uh, yes, and uh, good evening to you. Hey, my man, Stevie. Yes. You know, first of all, it's a great day to be on God's green earth. You know, Truly, I, truly I, it I is. I really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, and to all the callers that call, they all have made some good, excellent comments. Mm -hmm. But, you know, <coughs> I think the basic is common sense. Right. I mean, come on. Common Real. sense. You know you touch your hand, then the fire is going to burn. Right. But yet still, there's some people got to touch that fire anyway. But I think uh, sometimes people get it quicker. Some people get it slower. And some people just don't get it at all. At all. Right. And uh, that's the way life is. That's just the way life is. Because every one of us got stories. Everybody on God's green earth got a story. And a lot of us have uh, learned. You learn your lesson. So common sense comes in. It's time to do things. Don't do foolish things. Uh, you, you could take example. You could take a well-to-do family. And uh, they was raised right prior to them, them, them. And then when they have their kids, they supposed to be the oh, next person in line right, to right. do something. But they get in the streets. And they end up being a bigger fool than the people that's in the streets already. That's true. Well, that's, I don't mean to laugh, but that's true. That's people that is not a leader, but a follower. Followers. See, we have a lot of followers. I remember my uh, father used to always tell me, there used to be plenty chiefs. Plenty chiefs. Mm -hmm. But where's the Indians? Right. So, again, you know, we got to be smart. And we got to think things out. You can't force anything, but things do come. But again, common sense. People take time out to say, "Why am I going to pick up this gun and go shoot somebody?" Or why you don't drugs don't walk to you. You walk to drugs. Right, right, so true. things that we do, we do on our own. No one ain't making us do anything. But listen, I, I could go on forever and talk about our people and myself. But, Lewis, listen, you have a great show. Again, we wait for you every Friday. I appreciate and, uh, it. Thanks for this call. Let me get out there so I can hear your response. Thanks, Stevie. All right. Now, what, what Steve was talking about is common sense. I had a, a young lady, that we'll forget it, was in the class I was facilitating, and we touched on the word common sense. And the young lady said, she said, well, Mr. Gross, my common sense might not be your common sense. So, where's, you know, where is like a medium when we talk about common sense? Well, it goes to behavior, doesn't it? You know, it goes to behavior, which also goes to training, home training, nurturing. And that, 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 that's where, and that, when we deal with behavior, uh, the study of psychology, which is the study of human behavior, you can see there's a reason for what people do. For instance, you might be a victim at the house. Mama beat, up, beat you up, father, you know, come in drunk, talk about you, and, and do all kind of horrendous things. But see, that's where the power lies in that house, because you live there under their roof. But lo and behold, you're a victim there. But when you go to school, I'm talking about you know, our young kids. You're going from being a victim to a villain. It's called a victim-villain syndrome. So, you know, remember, thermal energy never dissipates. It's just transferred. I'm hot. I'm mad. I'm angry. So I take it on somebody else. Proximity. Look at Roseland. Look at the west side. Look at the south side. Look what's happening. Houses are foreclosed on. They're boarded up. Children are homeless. Now you got schools that are empty. And they put them in, in, in other schools. And they got to cross an uh, um, imaginary line to go to another school. And that line is like a demarcation line where, you know, hey, you're in my territory now. 
When are they going to realize you don't have any territory? You don't. Because if that guy tells you, the powers of be said, look here, take your car tomorrow morning. It was one way going north. I want you to turn and make it go one way going south. They're going to adhere to that. So, it's not your territory, is it? But, uh, uh, but you know, I'm saying all this to say that we're in trouble. <laughs> you already know that, right? Because we want to watch TV. We want to uh, procrastinate what we can do today, we want to do tomorrow. And, and, and you know what? One of those things is raising our children. You want to wait till tomorrow to do that when you should do it today. You should explain you know, the reasons why you don't want to do this, you don't want to do that. And I, that's another thing I find that when you're angry at your child, I don't, I'm so angry at you, I'm mad at you, and, you know. Hey, make a distinction. Tell little Johnny, hey, Johnny, I love you, but I don't like your behavior. And, and that way, he gets a better understanding of his behavior. But, you know, we're talking at him and not to him. We're not trying to listen to him. We got, and that's another thing. We don't listen. We're so preoccupied with BS till it's, it's, it's just a shame. It's just a shame. And, and you know what the end result is? The behavior. It's the behavior. And I find that if you can take the time to talk to these children, you can see what's on their mind, basically. And you also see that in a world of hurt, disillusionment, they're befuddled, bewildered, and bedazzled about the lack of uh, apathy uh, in terms of their plight. Bewildered, befuddled, and bedazzled about how we're treating them. And the three sites, they don't have any foresight because they don't have any vision. They don't have any insight because they don't know who they are. And in hindsight, they don't even think about what they've done the day before or the day, uh, 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 this day. So they're in a world of hurt and loss. And, you know, wh what's our answer? Well, let's incarcerate them. Yes. You know, it's just, it's just a shame. So when a child does come to school, they got baggage. They got a lot of baggage. And we, as adults, are supposed to be like consultants, to guide them along to, to be independent, to be productive citizens in the community, to reach back and help somebody else. It's like W.B.E.B. Du Bois said, the town of Tenth. Pull one up. And don't always look about you know, uh, being a worker. Think about being a manufacturer. i ask you a question right now. How many people, black, on a currency exchange in this town. How many people black own a parking lot downtown in this town? Huh? I'm asking. Put your barbecue down and think about what I'm saying. Stop watching SpongeBob and start dealing with some realities. And by the way, <laughs> in your home, make it literacy laden. Even if you have to get some comic books. So this child will read them and enjoy them, but in the process, he's learning how to read and retain information, comprehend information. I ask you, do something for somebody else besides yourself. Take a parallel view. Don't deal with blinders. Look here, reach outside the box. But as always, in closing, if you feel as though you run out of rope, tie a knot and hang on. Everything is going to be all right. I assure you. Peace and love.